was doing it right now. It doesn't make sense economically. So, of course, he's a harper. <laughs> he's never been so let down by free market capitalism. And it turns out, I never thought I'd see it. I've worked all my whole life in public policy and working to protect the environment. I thought our enemies were globalization and multinationals and corporate greed. Turns out, there is a critical deficit globally of rapacious capitalist corporations. <laughs> there, is a, there is simply an insufficient amount of corporate free market greed. And so as a result, they have to go for rapacious communist greed because they can't get enough money from the free market. Changing the National Energy Board Act so that Cabinet has the ability to overturn an NED decision. Those are all things. And now the Navigable Waters Protection Act. These are moves to expedite development. And they, it's clear that in the past, Chinese investors had complained that they didn't like the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act. I don't see any reason. I mean, I mean Stephen Harper on his own and his own antipathy towards all things environmental, that can explain most of it. But the, the real smoking gun here in my theory is the decision to say that cabinet can overturn an NAB decision. Because the National Energy Board is not controlled by Greenpeace. The National Energy Board approves pipelines. The National Energy Board does not turn down pipelines. So why would Stephen Harper decide that it was important in Bill C-38, the omnibus bill, to fundamentally change the role of a quasi-judicial body like the NAB and say it's now merely making recommendations on decisions and cabinet can overturn them. I think it's because he probably had a conversation in Beijing in February in which they said, how can you promise us the Northern Gateway project is going ahead? Isn't there a risk that this regulatory body you have might say no? I mean, okay. one can easily understand the anxiety of the People's Republic of China about the reliability of Stephen Harper to dictate things in a democracy. <coughs> so he changed the law. I'm sure of it. How much more will we be unable to repair these laws in the future if the People's Republic of China has the right to sue us, if we change our laws or improve them in such a way that they lose their expectation of profits? That's why this is a terrifying prospect. Just this week, under Chapter 11 of NAFTA, which works the same way in terms of investor state provisions, a US-based corporation is suing the province of Quebec for banning fracking. So here I am in the House of Commons working on these issues, and I feel sometimes as though, but I always feel that my work is valuable. I work really hard across party lines. I've prepared a lot of background material for MPs in particularly the Conservative Caucus in hopes they find a way to stop their boss from ratifying the treaty. I called every premier across Canada. I begged everybody. It's not ratified yet, so we don't give up on stopping it. But I've got to say the one thing that right now has me so happy, I feel like I have a winning lotto ticket in my pocket, and I'm scared to take it out and check the number, because I want it so much I can't bear it. And that's the by-elections. Because right now, we're close to having two new Green Party members of the Parliament to join me in Ottawa. <laughs> I was asking some of the young Greens here, can you come over to Victoria and canvas with us? We've got a little bit more time left, but if you can't come over to Victoria, you can go to our website and you can sign up to do phone canvassing from your own home. We have a great software program. You can just do it off your computer. Our candidate in Victoria is a friend of mine from almost the last 30 years. His name is Donald Galloway. He's a professor of law at UVic, and he has volunteer time, done so much on human rights issues, on refugee rights, on immigration law. He's a wonderful candidate. He's wowing them in the debates. And we're getting, we're clearly in second place, and we're catching up on the NDP. This is the first
first time ever that I've been involved in a campaign, which is clearly, it's either going to be an NDP member of parliament or it's going to be a Green member of parliament. The Conservatives are at 12% in Victoria. Yeah. Calvary Centre, where I'm going tomorrow, and I don't know how many of you are following this, but our candidate is Chris Turner, author of The Geography of Hope, The Lead, How to Survive, Thrive, and Sustainable Future. He's a brilliant author, he's a journalist, and he's got buzz going in Calvary Centre right now. The last poll out of Calvary Centre showed that in the last two weeks, his polling had improved 109%. Wow. And the In the 
next week, before November 26th, when the voters in Calvary Center and Victoria go to the polls, please sign up to do phone canvassing. We need you. Come over to Victoria. We need you. Go to Calvary Center if you've got friends there. We are, in, we are this close to tripling the Green Party caucus. And as I said, it would be so extraordinary and it would deliver a message that I think could drive Stephen Harper out of office before 2015. Which would be our goal. Our goal. So, thanks a million for being here and thanks for all your support. Woo! 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 Personally, is it normally very political?